we're gonna cast some stuff. <clears throat> um, it's really smelly, so you want to do it outside. Uh, normally, I wear a respirator when doing it, uh, but today, because I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna do it out here, and hopefully, it won't smell too bad. Uh, you want to wear gloves whenever doing this to keep it off your hands. Um, probably going to want a respirator. Some people can tolerate it. Some people, it's pretty bad. So that's all. Um, we're going to do six, seven colors today. I have one more cup. Seven colors. Uh, these six in white I have in here already. Uh, we're going to cast some bottle stopper blanks. These have uh, stuff already in them. Some empty ones. They're just cut up pipe by it at Home Depot. And then we're going to do a few pen blanks. Um, some stuff that we use. I uh, use this little measuring thing to scoop out the pigments and lichens and these little things I use to swirl the, the resin together. Um, we'll probably only do two colors mixed to get together today and a couple single colors. Um, other things you need are resin. Get a five gallon pail of it. Buy it. Um, online. If you want to just try it out, you can go to Michael's and buy Casting Craft. Um, and then you need an activator, which is this. And you put um, drops of that into the resin. Uh, so I'm going to scoop some of these in here. And I usually put these in first. And I'm going to use the, the, the single dash for a two ounce cup. And I've drawn lines for the two ounces. So hopefully the wind will cooperate till I get all these in and some resin in there to hold it down. You want to clean in between so you don't contaminate your uh, next color. Some of these are fluffier, I guess. Some are more clumpy. Um, I'll show you the different ways to deal with the clumpy ones. The fluffy ones stir in pretty well. Um, but I'll show you how to deal with the clumps. When I first do these, I'll do it with a blue one. Um, I don't pour the whole two ounces in. I just pour just a little bit in there. And that way, when you get your stir stick and mix it, you can mix and really kind of work the clumps out of it. So you don't put a whole lot in there. And this makes it easier to break up the clumps as opposed to them just kind of floating around inside um, the resin. When you have more in there, they just kind of can avoid the, the scraping. You don't need to do this on everything. It's something you'll have to get used to. Um, what, what paints or what pigments clump up. Um, this white gets really clumpy. Kind of hard to tell, see it, but you can see that the chunks still left in there that need to be broken up. Whereas with the blue one, it's pretty smooth, very smooth looking. And I'll do this with all of them. I just generally do it anyway. 
not a big deal. Um, you definitely want to get clumps out. Hello. You want to get clumps out because um, as you're turning the resin, you'll hit a clump and you'll get a little powder and it'll leave a little pit in, in a rough surface in your, uh, your casting. I'll let that sit for a minute and soak up. I get my powders at various places. Um, probably for a beginner, somebody just starting out that wants to get a large amount of pigments right away. Um, on Amazon you can buy a 32 pack of Perlex powders, pigments. They come in little jars like this. It's They're like, I don't know, 5 grams, something like that. It's actually a, quite a bit of pigment. It does not weigh that much. So you could get quite a few pen blanks or casts out of you know just one of those little things and you get 32 different colors so it gives you a good variety to start out with oh this is spring green all right we're gonna fill them up to their level uh, the resin i'm using is polyester resin and for that you need uh, methyl ethyl ketone peroxide or MEKP. This is the activator that hardens it. Um, generally, they have recommendations for uh, how much to use. Realistically, you're going to want to adjust it. Um, in the summer, I usually put uh, three to four drops in every ounce. In the winter, when it's cold here, it takes quite a bit more, uh, sometimes seven. You don't want to overdo it because it makes it too brittle. If you uh, put too much in and it, and it reacts too fast, so you want to kind of keep it. Um, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to, to really work. Generally, it's better to wait longer, but not too long. So you want your hard, your your colors to not blend and mix together. So you can, you need to wait a set amount of time, and then start pouring them. Um, the way I kind of deal with that a little bit is I have a timer, and I only activate half of them right away and then I come back through and activate the other half five minutes later. That way they have time to, uh, one, one will, will start to harden before the other one, so there's less chance of, them, of both hardening at the same time or all of them hardening at the same time. So I'm gonna put, uh, put eight drops. I put little marks on the sides of the ones that I uh, activated first. So that way I know that I don't come back through and reactivate them. Um, make sure you stir good and you want to scrape the sides. Get all the activator mixed in there very well. At this point, stirring bubbles into them isn't awful the way I do it because I cast with a pressure pot. And a pressure pot will crush all those bubbles to basically make them non-existent. Um, People, you can cast polyester resin without a pressure pot, and, and I have done that. Um, there's ways to assist in that. Um, some people heat their resin and warm it up, and it makes it more liquid, um, and the bubbles come out. Some people use a vacuum chamber. I'm not personally not a fan of a vacuum chamber. I do have a vacuum pump. I could make one, but I, I don't really it's like it red dye to it. Um, you don't need much because it's very strong. You'll see here in a minute when I mix it. So we'll see. It, it really usually looks darker in the uh, 
when there's a thick amount of it. I made that mistake. I thought I put a dark red one time, and then when I poured it, it ended up being pretty translucent red. Um, one thing you will want to do on um, those kind of dyes do kind of um, retard the activator. So you want to add a little bit more to that one. They are Lumilite. Um, Lumilite makes a, a resin that um, is fairly good and used a lot in casting. It's used a lot with uh, casting with wood items and other embedded items. All right, it's been uh, five minutes. Say it one. Say it one, Daddy. All right, thank you. Now I know what time I added them in. Bottle stoppers. I'm going to pour some, uh, hopefully, wine-colored stuff in there. At least that's what it's supposed to look like. It'll be a little bit sparkly. But... So this is like the calm phase of this. When it comes time to pour it, you kind of rush around like a crazy person. You always want extra tubes in case you uh, have too much stuff. Yeah. Hello. Um, so you just pour the extra in here. You get these really cool weird colors sometimes with just kind of blending everything. Usually check it to see how thin it is. It's really a touch thing. Eventually you'll you'll get to where you can do it without having to do it. Keep a log book of every color I did, how much how many drops, um, all the all the blends I made. And I, I number them for like the 28th time I've cast, and then I give them letters. So if, if somebody wants something for uh, later, I can they can reference it. If they like a color or they want more of those, I, I can go back and make more. All right, I'm gonna start pouring some of these. Kind of pinch them. Easy there, camera lady. <laughs> kind of camera on my sleigh homes fell. Um, kind of swirl them back and forth. I'll blend them like this. Um, you'll get your own techniques. Just takes a lot of practice. Next one, I'm going to kind of pour the little layers because I'm going to add a green to the mix. And I've never really got good at pouring three at a time. Um, I'm sure there's techniques that allow you to do it very well, but. make these little things out of copper wire. I, don't, I didn't test that one to fit. I tried it. One. And I just kind of push them down in. 
give them a swirl to kind of swirl those colors together. I kind of call this technique the glob technique. I don't know. I just made that up. Flowers? Sometimes I think having an extra pair of hands to do this would make it so much easier. Can you do a flower next, Dada? Hmm, sweetie? Can you do a flower? Mm -hmm. I had a little bit of leftover resin, so I'm just going to pour it in the bottom of this. And um, polyester resin, once it's cured, will still kind of stick to itself. I make this so it goes on top because um, when you put the air in it, it comes through here pretty hard and it will blow your resin around. So you use that to deflect it. Lily, I need you to go outside the garage. Um, when you tighten these, you want to tighten both opposite sides. You don't want to go around in a circle, it'll leak or you'll be more prone to leaking. If you do this, it's kind of a dangerous thing. You want to make sure you have pressure relief valve, your regulator set. Um, and then you just slowly bring pressure up. And I usually go I usually go up to about 50 PSI, which is actually usually about what my pressure, my air compressor will do. And then I close this, and then I take this off. So there's no chance of adding more pressure to it. And that's it. We'll pull them out tomorrow. Thank you.